السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ فرینڈز ویلکم بیک ٹو مائی چینل اف یو آر ورکنگ آن ویلڈنگ مشین اف یو آر ورکنگ آن بورڈ آف ایئر کنڈیشنر انورٹر بیسڈ آر یو آر ورکنگ آن واشنگ مشینس اینڈ وی ہیو دا موسٹ کامن پرابلم دیٹ وین وی انسٹال آئی جی بی ٹی وین وی ریپلیس آ ڈیمیجڈ آئی جی بی ٹی ریپلیس ود نیو ون دا نیو ون آئی جی بی ٹی ڈیمیج ود ان منٹ with a short time it will damage what is the reason we will discuss and how to test igbt with multimeter let's start in this welding machine i have 40 n60 igbt fgh 40 n60 we read just only this number we don't care about the suffix it is sfd the next digits the next letters to the part number we must take care for this it is fgh 40 and 60 sfd it is a complete part number if i will go to some spare part supplier and i ask him 40 and 60 he will might be he will give me this fgh 40 and 60 it is sfd and it is sf there is a very big difference between both part numbers just only here is d missing and here the word d is available but if we look gate collector emitter gate collector emitter the same but internal structure that is totally different it is the biggest problem here we have gate it is igbt insulated gate bipolar junction transistor so it have collector emitter and gate it have collector emitter and gate the number is same 40 and 60 40 and 60 here i have a diode here i don't have this diode this d means with diode it is simple igbt with field stop f field stop igbt if i want to test igbt there are many ways to test igbt but a perfect way first of all take a tweezer or use uh, the test leads of the multimeter make a discharge for all pins using tweezer you can discharge the gate pin with collector and gate pin with emitter we have to discharge it now ideally any igbt must be insulated because it have no junction with the emitter and collector it is insulated so it should give high resistance if you want to test it in the resistance mode gate to collector gate to emitter it is high resistance now put black lead to the emitter here and connect red lead to the collector red lead to the collector collector is center one it should open we have a diode here this diode is reverse biased and this junction should open now the diode is reverse biased and the collector to emitter junction is open so it's open reverse the leads black lead to the collector red lead to the emitter what we did black lead to the collector red lead to the emitter black lead is connected to this diode so this diode is forward bias because black lead is negative is connected to cathode of that diode so it is good condition we can test it in diode mode as well one diode open one diode open one diode open one diode open so collector to emitter if we test in this way we will find one diode but if we test this igbt with this part number 40 and 60 sf without diode it should open in both cases 
Now the next test for this IGBT. As I discussed, if I put black lead to the collector, red lead to the emitter, collector is in the center, emitter is in the right side. So I am taking 0.443 volt DC and reverse bias overload open circuit. Now we can check the resistance, no resistance, high resistance and I am taking 244k resistance that is for this diode. Now we will test a very perfect test for IGBT for the gate to these junctions. Watch it carefully. Black lead collector, red lead emitter. Black lead I am taking this resistance. Reverse the leads. No resistance. Okay. No resistance. Now touch the red lead to the gate. And now I am taking 118.2 kilo ohm resistance from collector to emitter. Note it carefully. Now the red lead at collector, black lead at the emitter, black lead at the emitter. This diode is reverse bias, but when we touch this gate, this gate is charged. Now we are taking this junction resistance from collector to emitter. One side 118K, the second side the diode resistance 232K. Discharge collector to gate, check resistance again, open 244K diode resistance. 244K diode resistance, no resistance. Now just only touch the multimeter and see the multimeter screen. Now we will take reading here. So the gate is charged. When the gate will charge at that time we will take Junction resistance 118K, but in reverse polarity I am taking 232K resistance for this diode. Red lead at emitter, black lead at collector. So this diode is forward bias here. But now in this way I am taking the junction resistance. Now make a discharge. So this IGBT is good. Now we will check the other IGBT gate to collector discharge, gate to emitter discharge in ohm mod black lead at emitter, red lead at collector. This IGBT is open. Now we will swap the leads. Black lead at collector, red lead at emitter, 244K. This resistance is for the diode, forward bias. Forward condition resistance, reverse condition. Just only one side resistance, it is here. Now, black lead at emitter and just only touch the red lead to the gate. The multimeter will show some reading and then it is open. Now return back lead to the collector. Now I am taking 117 kilo ohm resistance. That means the IGBT is transferred and switching mode collector to emitter because I charge this gate. Swap the leads. In this condition I am taking the forward resistance of this diode 229K but in this condition when collector 
and emitter is collected here black lead at emitter red lead at collector so this IGBT diode safety diode is by uh, reverse bias now I am taking this juncture resistance because I charge this gate 117k now discharge the gate now it is open we will take just only one side resistance that is forward bias resistance but now touch the gate emitter and gate and now we can find the resistance so it is a perfect test for IGBT now we can test IGBT in an other very quick way that is very useful first of all discharge the gate gate to collector discharge them properly gate to emitter I discharge it ok I am taking a supply voltage to charge the gate I am taking 15 volt set multimeter to ohms between collector to emitter no resistance I will connect this supply voltage to the emitter the right most pin and I will connect the black lead to this pin now the multimeter is in resistance mode and I am using 15 volt supply this IGBT collector to emitter no resistance just only touch the voltage to the gate it is 100 kilo ohm resistance now 100 kilo discharge it now it is zero op overload connect to gate 100 kilo ohm resistance it means this IGBT is working properly and it is holding the charge on the gate because gate is insulated when we apply voltage its gate component will charge shift to the second IGBT emitter it is open connect 15 volt to the gate it is switched discharge it check the resistance open circuit 106 ohm open circuit 15 ohm 115k discharge it it's open 110k now why the IGBT is damaged first thing that I discussed here that is a wrong selection of the part number if we have field stop IGBT technology so we must have to select field stop IGBT then if the original component was using diode based protection diode based then we have to select the diode based IGBT if we will select this one it will cause to face a over voltage stress on collector to emitter so it must damage because we selected a wrong component then the next parameter as I discussed here IGBT should have to charge and discharge the gate if the gate is not properly discharged and the second second pair started to switch this IGBT is still in conduction mode and the second IGBT the opposite also started to switch so these will damage why because one have to stop second have to switch this have to stop this have to switch this have to switch one by one if the both components 
in the high side and low side will conduct together there is no re no reason that they should not damage they must be destroyed because the gate is not discharged properly when we replace igbt we have to test the capacitor diode which is discharging the gate so friends i hope so this video is informative if it is informative hit the like button if you have any question kindly let me know in the comment box i will welcome thanks for watching assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh